Uh, Senator Chuck Ferguson's here somewhere, my colleague in the Senate. Chuck's got a lot of hard work. I, I've seen uh, Representative Tom Shively is here, and Representative Paul Quinn I see is here. Did I miss anybody else? Ben, we're here. Who'd I miss? I'm sorry. A representative, stand up, give me your name. I'm sorry. Tony, I'm sorry. I'm new term limits. We don't know everybody down here. Um, I, I appreciate you coming to Missouri. Uh, I think you can see very a lot of interest in what's what's happening here. Uh, just two or three things that were on my mind. On the food safety issue, it seems to me that uh, where I've seen the problems arise is from the processing end. When it comes from those things that we need to monitor food safety. I think putting $130 million into NAIS, we could redirect a lot of those dollars and protect a lot more folks if we redirect that in the processing. And in fact, probably about 1998, there was a, a congressional uh, study that came out. The title of it actually was Filth on the Kill Floor. And I think I got a copy of that in my desk in the Capitol. Uh, be happy to give that to you guys so you can kind of see we've, this is a problem that's been going on. Uh, number two for Missouri. Uh, if you're, I'm a farmer myself. Uh, we raised a farm with my father, my brother-in-law, and my son. And we have about 120 or 30 cows, and we cow calf it, along with our row cow. Uh, the average cost for a Missouri producer most likely would be around uh, $16, I think what Kansas, said, Kansas State said, to implement this on an average herd of 100. I think these costs are very prohibitive, especially in Missouri. The average herd is 44 cows. And I have long said that what has protected us to be independent uh, producers in the cattle industry in Missouri is our diversity. You can't corral us all in one place. And that protects us. So there's a lot of us who uh, want to fight for that uh, uh, diversity. Um, number four, uh, frankly, right now it's kind of against Missouri law unless we legislature vote to let NAIS, and you can thank Senator Perkerson and the hard work a lot of other folks. say very quickly is how frustrated I stood by and watched several years ago when we disallowed voluntary testing. We disallowed Creekstone Farms to voluntarily test for mad cows so they could export into a foreign market. And we shut that industry down. I guess I'll just finish up. My belief is keep it voluntary. If we want to voluntarily identify our animals so we can get a a premium out of the market and we can export into that market let us find the fit for our farms one size does not fit all thank you I'm not going to be quite that great a speaker <laughs> that about right Anyway, I'm David Patton. I'm owner of uh, South Central Regional Stockyards uh, Lifestyle Market of Vienna, Missouri, and I'm also president of the Missouri Lifestyle Marketing Association. We have several markets represented here. I hope that you guys uh, visit with them through the breakout sessions. Uh, I want to say the livestock markets, you, as everyone knows, are the most important point in commerce implementing any national animal ID system. It's because of tens of thousands of cattle consigned for sale every day by hundreds of different sellers that move through the livestock markets onto numerous destination points all over the United States. For any ID system to be successful, it must allow for the sale and movement of livestock at the speed of commerce. The speed of commerce of livestock markets means processing and marketing consigned cattle on sale day within just a few hours, minimizing weight shrinkage, shrinkage protecting the safety and welfare of market employees and the livestock they handle through the sale and moving animals on to their next destination with a minimum of delay. Because the majority of our members remain skeptical that a low frequency RFID program requiring movement by movement traceability would uphold the all important speed of commerce, NAIS should remain a voluntary program. Yeah. USD is very, or USDA is very well aware of the market concerns respecting to the NAIS plan. So I'm going to list just a few very briefly. Number one, low frequency RFID tag and reader technology has been demonstrated in USDA pilot studies to be inadequate in preserving the speed of commerce in most market settings. Number two, USDA's technology neutral stance 
will result in the proliferation of incompatible, imperfect ID technologies and systems, resulting in the numerous inefficiencies and costs to the industry. Number three, many livestock markets will have to establish tagging services for their consigners and able to tag their animals on the farm. This leads to a number of concerns, pardon me, such as added cost to the markets, staffing, worker safety, liability, and the all-important animal welfare. Number four, the recently uh, released cost-benefit study has shown implementation of the NIIS will cost the cattle industry nearly $200 million annually. And we, uh, after reviewing the costs of the markets, we would argue those costs were woefully underestimated. Also, who is ultimately to pay those costs? Number five, and maybe one of the most important, we must not force on the producers and market operators an animal ID program that is so expensive or difficult to, to operate, comply with, that they choose to leave the business rather than comply with the program. <laughs> it's time for the USDA, the USDA to focus on what is an achievable and cost-effective ID program and abandon those parts of the NAIS that were probably always too ambitious or unachievable such as a fully traceable low-frequency EID aspects of the program. If a book-in ID starting with the breeding herd makes more sense, both in its effective and lowest cost, let's work together to figure out something to work. The livestock markets are standing ready and willing to work with the USDA DA, and industry allied partners. One other item I would like to note, we are livestock markets, we are not sale barns. <laughs>